Hey there, what's up? My name is Marley and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be talking about my favorite books of the year, 2021. A lot of people are uploading these types of videos. A lot of people are uploading like their least favorite, their most disappointing, surprising, stuff like that. I'm only doing my favorites. Uh, I'm gonna do a top 10, maybe mention some honorable mentions as well, but I wanted to go through and kind of look at some of my stats for the year. I don't really do that often, so I thought maybe I should. First, let's go through Goodreads, how they put together a little like year of books my year in books sorry so pages read over 40,000 and 106 books read so they're counting a dnf so i technically am at 105 that'll probably go up before the end of the year but i'm filming this just because i don't think i'm gonna have another favorite before the end of the before the end of the year. Oh great, it's cutting that off. So shortest book I read was called Sticks and Stones. This actually, I read for school. It was kind of like a children's or like a teen book. Then we had the longest book it was Kingdom of Ash, which you guys might know took me months to read. It was, it was rough. Average book length in 2021 was 382 pages. Not surprising. Uh, I don't really like to read super long books, but I also don't read a lot of novellas that are super short, so this makes sense. Most popular book that I've shelved was A Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Not surprising. This is a classic, iconic horror book. And the least popular was that same, like, kids book. Probably Canadian as well. My average rating was four stars. Not surprising. If you watch my channel, you know I'm not a super critical reader. Like, I'm not here giving out one or two stars really very often at all so highest read on goodreads that i read was heartstopper not surprising this is such a cute graphic novel series i'm sure everyone just like easily gives it five stars like i did my first review of the year was air of fire by sarah j mass this is what i started off the year with so it's nice that i actually finished this series before the end of the year and then we have a look at all the books i read it's so funny like some of these books i'm like I feel like I read them so long ago, I can barely remember. So this is just a look at some of them. Don't know how interesting this is, but... My last review so far is Firekeeper's Daughter, which is also not accurate. I have finished the push, but okay. So next up, I'm gonna look at Storygraph. I just recently joined Storygraph, so definitely add me on there. And I didn't realize you could import all your info from Goodreads on there. So it's really nice because I have all my books from the year already on there. And they do a lot of interesting stats that you can see on a monthly basis that I think is really cool. So I think that's what I'm gonna use it for more often. But anyways, let's take a look at that next for the year 2021. So for Moods Red, Overwhelmingly, I had dark, mysterious, emotional, and adventurous as my main moods. So this is interesting. I think this is definitely due to the fact that I mostly read thrillers now, which makes sense for the dark and mysterious stuff. The least is inspiring and sad and challenging. I feel like those would be more for nonfiction, so I think that makes sense because I, I don't read that. For pace, I mostly read medium to fast pace and not really slow. I think that definitely makes sense sense for page number mostly 300 to 500 not very many that were more than 500 and not that many that were less than 300 completely fiction Comple completely fiction i read no non-fiction then for genres i think this is very interesting that young adult is still my biggest genre and i don't feel like i am reading as much young adult i think it just feels like I'm not though because when i do read young adult it's normally thriller and fantasy so it's kind of like a subgenre, I guess. I don't think young adult really should be a genre. That's just like an age category. Next is fantasy, which is interesting. I feel like this is maybe because I did read so many like Grishaverse books this year. Romance is next, and then contemporary, and then thriller. So I'm quite surprised that thriller is not higher. Maybe thriller is getting divided between thriller and mystery. I don't know. Format, I don't really think this is accurate. And then most read authors, Lee Bardugo and Sarah J. Mass, simply because I was trying to get through their series a few other authors that i think were authors of like manga so i obviously read multiple volumes of those alice oseman because of the graphic novels and then ruth ware and lisa jewel are two of my thriller queens so that makes sense and then number of book 
pages. This is sort of interesting. So June was definitely my best month, I guess. And then I picked it up again in November. So our ratings, as you can see, seem to, as good reads. And yeah, I just thought that was interesting before we got into the books. So before I get into my top 10, I'm just gonna quickly run through like four honorable mentions that I also gave five stars this year, but I'm not gonna go into depth on them. So first up is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Many may say this is an overhyped book that does not deserve the hype and hate on it, but not me. I rated this very highly. This got a lot of emotion out of me and I read it super quick. It's written in this super fast paced, easy to read way, like super short chapters. Loved it. Then we have Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This is a pretty popular book online. It is about a hockey town. It deals with a rape case. It deals with a lot of heavy topics like that. It's definitely not as much of an easy read, but it really is worth it in the end. The story, it will tug at your heartstrings. It will make you just feel a whole bunch of things. So another great one to pick up if you haven't yet. Then there's also The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Kloon, a king, a true king. So this book I read semi recently. It is again, just a very inspiring, heartwarming story about found family. It deals with, you know, a man going to an orphanage and all these like very interesting, kids are there that you just grow to love. There's romance in it as well. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. It was great. And then the last honorable mention was the most recent book that I finished, which was The Push by Ashley Audrain. This is like a psychological mystery or psychological drama that deals a lot with motherhood and like the hardships in motherhood and a lot of like fear that people have with becoming parents. It was amazing. It was so easy to get through again. Super short chapters, super compelling with like a great twist at the end. Okay, let's get into my top 10. So I don't feel like super confident about this order. Like I am a Libra at the end of the day. I really struggle with like decision making. And it's also just hard because I've read some of these books really early in the year and some late and it's just really hard for me to pick my top 10. Here we go. First up, we have The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. I do own it, but my mom is currently borrowing it because she saw how much I had hyped it up in my wrap up for November, I think it was. So this is Lisa Jewell's newest book and I highly recommend all of her books, but this is by far my favorite one that she's had so far. So we are following the disappearance of this teenage mom and her boyfriend, AKA the baby daddy. They go missing one night so we are seeing that timeline leading up to that event. Then we are seeing the aftermath where the girl's mother is wondering where she is and trying to find her and working with the police. And then we're seeing a third timeline that's like a year later, some revelations are sort of coming out in the case. So it's hard to say more than that without obviously giving things away, but this was one of those thrillers that kept you guessing, kept you super interested in like the mystery aspects, but then also made you care so much for the characters, especially the main family family that we're following, the main character. There's some LGBT representation in there as well, if that's important to you. And it made me cry. It made me cry or like tear up. And that's very rare in like a thriller for it to make you feel things. So that's why it has to be on the list. Number nine is going to be another thriller. And that is The One by John Mars. This is more of a sci-fi thriller. It takes place in this world where there is this new technology where you test your DNA and it will match you with your true love or like your soulmate or whatever. And it's really interesting because we're following all these different characters that have different experiences with this process. One of them that's most notable is a serial killer. So what happens when a serial killer finds his soulmate, but yet he's trying to like murder people. <laughs> Each person has something interesting going on and you're watching basically it all go to crap for each of them as you can imagine it's a thriller so there's twists and there's turns honestly throughout i know it's just so fast paced i got through it so quick and i really highly recommend this one as well number eight is going to be the southern book cubs cubs oh my the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is a horror novel I read in October and I haven't read that many horror, but this was like a really fun one, I think, to maybe like introduce you to the genre because it has such a cool concept. It is about this book club for 
all these sort of middle-aged housewives in the 80s and early 90s. They like to read mostly true crime novels, like spookier books. Then one day this man comes to town, Patricia, one of the women, thinks that he is a vampire and that he is like killing children in a town nearby and so she tries to you know recruit the rest of the book club to help her take him down and save the town so it's really fun it is very frustrating it is very disgusting <laughs> or disturbing i i you normally say but it is so good it has a lot of social commentary on a lot of different issues like racism and sexism for example so definitely read this book if it sounds interesting to you next up we have something a little bit different for me and that is actually a manga series and it is the promised neverland by these people i don't really know how to pronounce their name so i read this for a trying manga vlog that my friend ali wanted me to do where i read some of her favorites and she's probably gonna criticize me because i have only read the first four volumes out of like 20 something and and I haven't managed to read any more but I have given them all five stars I've really really been enjoying this series and I will be continuing it in the new year in case you guys aren't familiar this is about an orphanage called Gracefield House and we're in particular following a couple of the orphans who are a little bit older and then one day one of the kids sees something sort of mysterious suspicious going on and then they start trying to look into what is actually going on at this orphanage it is not what you would expect it's not this nice little orphanage that they all thought it was where people are getting adopted there is definitely a very dark mysterious twist to it that i really cannot reveal because it's such an interesting thing to see come about in the actual book. I just love this because it reads like it's a thriller mystery series. And obviously from this list, you can see I've really been enjoying thriller books. So it makes sense that I would enjoy manga that has a similar tone and just really smart kids that are constantly trying to brainstorm and like outthink each other and it's super fun so this has been one of my favorites this year for number six we have the maidens by alex Megalides. this is where i say like maybe the order isn't perfect maybe this should have been lower i don't know but here it is this one is sort of interesting a bit of a hot take because i know some people really hate this novel but for me, I think it was one of the best books that I read. This is a thriller from the author of Asyl The Silent Patient. This one follows this woman who is a group therapist who finds out from her niece that a bunch of girls are getting killed at her niece's university. So then she goes to try and help her, like comfort her niece, but then also she gets wrapped up in trying to solve this mystery of who is murdering these girls. And it is seeming like it is a professor there at the school. He's very suspicious. He seems very involved with all of these young girls. I just found this book so addictive. I think I read most of it in just a day, which is always a really, really good sign for me when you don't wanna put the book down. I didn't guess the twist. Apparently some people did I didn't a lot of people didn't like where it went definitely check trigger warnings if you think that's something that would affect you but I really liked this book probably not as much as silent patient I don't think the twist was as good or unique by any means but the reading experience was just really enjoyable for me again I think it's pretty short chapters interesting stuff going on here so I personally do recommend this book now we have more of a lighthearted pick and that is the extraordinaries by TJ Kloon I just just adored this book it was so it was so fun it is taking place in this world where there are real superheroes our main character is obsessed with them he writes fan fiction about them he wants to be one he actually has a crush on this one superhero in like the city so he makes it like his mission to try and become a superhero and that's kind of like his goal during the book and especially after he has this encounter with that superhero and then he has a cute little group of friends and like there's romance in it it's very funny i think our Main character has ADHD so there's some representation there there's some good family stuff as well it was honestly just such a perfect book I still need to read the second one I need to read that very soon because it was just such a good time and I feel like I've heard even better things about the second book but the fact that it's like superheroes it's funny it has good romance friends family like it's everything and something i thought was really unique about it is that we're not falling from the point of view of a superhero it's basically like we're from the point of view of the superhero's love interest like if we were following mary jane or something like that and i thought that was really cool then we have an interesting one it is 
A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I really detested, I was gonna say really detested, but I really struggled with her Throne of Glass series. But when I read this book in the summer, I just remember enjoying myself so much. Like how is there such a difference between the two series? I still need to see because I need to continue with this series, but this was just so fun. It had to be five stars. If you for some reason don't know, this is following Farah, who lives in this like fantasy world that has a fairy realm. Sorry if I don't remember all the terms. I read this like months ago. But when she accidentally ends up killing a fae when she's in the woods having a little Katniss Everdeen moment, the high fae guy Tamlin comes and is like, as punishment for killing one of my homies, you're gonna have to come and be like prisoner at my kingdom and like live there forever. It's kind of based on Beauty and the Beast. So she goes and lives in his kingdom. They fall in love. <laughs> Halfway through, the book kind of changes and it gets a lot more interesting, a lot more action is going on. A new suitor joins the race, Resand, who you've probably heard of. But yeah, it was just super fun. It really reminded me of those old YA days where there's this, for some reason, super special girl getting dragged into this fantastical world and there's a love triangle and there's, I don't know, action and competition and stuff like that. So I just had a really great time. It was very nostalgic for me. I see what the hype is about and I'm excited to read the second book finally, probably next month. So stay tuned to hear my thoughts on that. All that's left is number two and number one. I think for number two, I don't know. They could go, it could go either way, but I'm just gonna say Chain of Iron. I'm holding up Chain of Gold. <laughs> Chain of Iron this time by Cassandra Clare. She would probably always appear in my best books lists. I know it's super basic. I know her books get some hate sometimes, but she is my favorite author and I just will always enjoy her books the most. In this series, it's The Last Hours and it's the second book in this series. This is taking place in London during the Edwardian era, like the turn of the century, and we are following the children from her series, The Infernal Devices. It's kind of hard to describe the plot because this is the second book in a series of like a super huge series. The Shadowhunter Chronicles follows these people that are shadow hunters. So basically they are, they are half human and half angel. So they have some like magical powers kind of that come from this rune system where they draw runes on themselves. There are also downworlders in this world such as fairies, werewolves, vampires, and warlocks. This series in particular also focuses a lot on the characters and the relationships. A lot of different romances going on, friendships, and familial relationships. I would really recommend it for YA fantasy lovers and those who are interested in that era of London. I know some people were more disappointed with this book in terms of where the romance went, but as someone who is rooting for the underdog in this love triangle, I really enjoyed this book. I'm talking about Matthew and Cordelia, if you didn't know. For my number one, can you guess it? It is going to be Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I also read the third one, As Good as Dead, this year as well, and I give it five stars too, so you could kind of see these both in the number one spot, but I did enjoy this one more. This one had some weird stuff going on in that one, but this is about Pip. So in the first book, she takes on solving this mystery for her, her senior high school project. Basically this girl had been murdered and her boyfriend had taken the fall. It was just like an easy person to blame as he also died, but she didn't believe that he had really done it. So she goes through this whole thing and finds out who actually committed the crime in her town. So it's kind of like a classic mystery. We have all the different suspects she's going through, like a little teen detective. In this second one, she is very popular because of that. She has a podcast, she's very well known now. And so a friend of hers reaches out to her when their brother goes missing. And so instead of it being like a murder mystery, the stakes are a little bit higher as it's actually a missing person mystery. So she's trying to find this missing person before he turns up dead or, you know, too much time has gone by. I just really have enjoyed these books. I think they're they are clearly my favorite of any YA thriller mystery books. It just has everything that you would want. And I like how Holly Jackson keeps it very fresh in each book. Each one, the mystery is very different, I would say. It's like a totally different concept, even though there are connections throughout each of them that all still relate to each other. I've talked enough about this series on my channel, but 
yeah this is the number one favorite book of the year slash this one so I think this is interesting. I think it's clear that thriller is my favorite genre officially. Thriller slash YA thriller, that's pretty evident. So I'll definitely make sure to try and keep reading those types of books in the new year. And I think this might be my final video of the year. So thank you guys for another great year on booktube. If you've not subscribed, please make sure to and leave me a comment on your thoughts on any of these books. Have I convinced you to read any of them or tell me what your favorite book of the year was so I can add it to my TBR. All right. Until next time, happy new year. Bye.